So the linkage problem of 5 slash 88 is repeated here. If the angular velocity and angular acceleration of drive link o AO are 10 radians per second and 5 radians per second squared respectively, counterclockwise, determine the angular accelerations of bars AB and BC for the instant represented. So I went through and solved question 5 slash 88, which was basically doing the velocity analysis on this linkage. So this current question is looking at doing the acceleration analysis on this linkage. So in order to be able to do the acceleration analysis, we need to know the angular velocities of all the components. And that's what fell out of question 5 slash 88. So I've just copied them down here. Please go and see that question if you want to know where they came from. The other things that we're going to reuse from 5 slash 88 are the radiuses of each of the different members. Okay, so again, if you want to see where they came from, go back and look at the um, analysis. So this time what we're looking at is finding angular accelerations of AB and BC. So let's assume a regular coordinate system. And if we assume the z-axis is out of the page, that's going to mean that anti-clockwise is the positive direction. So since we don't really know which way these things are going to go, let's just assume they're positive, and if they come out negative, then we know they're the other way. So this is going to be alpha AB that we're trying to determine, and this is alpha BC, again, what we're trying to determine. Now we know what the angular velocities are for each of those different members, so let's mark them in. Um, 1.73 so and up in the question here we're told that AO has got a speed and angular velocity as well so let's put them in Oops. So now we just need to um, commence the acceleration analysis. So you can see that we have three links here and the trick with all of them um, of the questions that look like this is to consider what happens between the points A and B, the two kind of mid um, points on the linkage. So the equation we're going to try and solve is that the acceleration of A relative to B is equal to the acceleration of A minus the acceleration of B. And remember that these two on the right hand sides are the absolute accelerations, that means they're relative to the ground or something that's not moving at all. So I'm going to go through and find each of these um, parts individually. Let's start with the relative term. So we know that since A and B are connected by a rigid member which is rotating, we're going to need to consider both the normal and tangential components of the acceleration. So first of all, the normal part, it's equal to omega cross omega cross r. So in this case, between a and b, omega is that 1.73. So I'll just write it like this for a second. And the radius, well, it's going to be between a and b. Remember, if you're looking at a relative to b, it needs to be the same form inside the um, radius as well. So for the tangential direction, it's equal to alpha cross r. So it's going to be alpha for the member, which we called ab, multiplied by, again, the same radius as what we used here. So now it's just a case of filling it in. So we know that this is equal to 1.73 radians per second. So it's in the positive direction, so it just gets a k. And multiplying this out, um, we figured out the radius of A relative to B back up here in the um, previous question, so we're just going to substitute that in. Okay. And then alpha AB is what we're trying to determine. We're assuming it's the positive direction, so it just gets a K. And again, the radius is the same as up here. So now it just becomes a case of simplifying this down. Um, you want to do the brackets first um, before you start doing the other things. So we'll leave the 1.73k outside 
and expand what's going on inside the brackets first. So multiplying these together, uh, you get 401 point, um, sorry, zero J plus 107.5 I. And then on the other side, this expands to this. So then we can expand out this bracket again and we get the best that we can do with it at this stage. Alright, so that's as far as we can go at this point. Um, we just need to work out these other two parts of the equation to be able to substitute them in. So the next thing that we need to look at is the acceleration of point A. So scrolling back up here, um, so we know that point A is connected to point O, which is a fixed point, so we're going to be able to utilize that relationship. And remember this again is a fixed or a rigid joint. So this time when we apply the equation, we're going to be looking at omega OA, which is 10 radians per second, and alpha OA, which is 5. And the other point to note is that the radius this time is going to be the radius of A relative to point O, our fixed point, which is described by this equation. So I'll just scroll down and start subbing stuff in. So the normal component, oops, let's write it out, so A N N A T. The normal component is going to be omega OA this time, crossed with omega OA and the radius of A relative to the fixed point in O. And then this is OA again multiplied by that same radius. So substituting in, we knew that this was 10 radians per second anti-clockwise, which is the positive direction. So it's 10K. And the radius of A relative to O that we worked out in the previous question is that. Oop. Alpha OA, we know this was the one that we were given. It was 5 radians per second squared in the positive direction. And we just substitute in the same radius. Alright, so expanding this out, you want to expand the bracketed part first. So, all right, and these two terms come from expanding out this bracket. And finally, we want to expand out this, this bit as well. So our answer becomes 4000i. Alright, so that's our answer. Now this time because we ended up with um, everything in terms of just constants, um, unlike this one up here where we had like alphas involved, um, we're actually able to put the i's together and the j's together. So if we want we can simplify this even further. To that. Alright, so we have one left that we need to do, which is the acceleration of point B. So remember this is the equation we're trying to fill out, we just need one more in it. So looking at the acceleration of point B, we're going to be able to relate it back to point C, which is a fixed point, um, using the angular velocity and angular accelerations here. And again, remember we've already worked out the radius that we need to use, um, 200j. So. For this last one, in vector form, it's going to be omega for the link that we're considering, which is BC. The radius of our point relative to the fixed one, which is C. And again, alpha for our link and the same radius at the end. So filling this out, we knew that omega BC was 4K from our analysis previously. And the radius is 200j. 
alpha BC gets a K because that's what we don't know, but we've assumed it the positive direction. And again, this is 200 J. So expanding this one out, remember you want to do the bracketed part first. So this here becomes um, negative 800 I. And this on the end becomes negative 200 alpha BC I. So one last step that we can take to simplify. So it looks like that. All right, so we now have all three parts of our equation and we can put them back together. All right, so filling this in. All right, so the first thing we worked out was the acceleration of A relative to B. And that came out to be equals the acceleration of A, um, which came out to be this. And then minus the acceleration of B, which is this. So we're going to end up with double negatives in here. All right. So now it's just a matter of taking apart the i and j components um, in order to work out our two unknowns, which is alpha AB and alpha BC. So I think it's easiest to start with um, the j parts. This is because we only have the one variable or one unknown tied up on the j side of the equation um, in alpha AB. So taking them out, we um, get the following equation for our J side of the components. And then it just becomes a case of rearranging for alpha AB. So when we do that, um, we end up with a final answer of negative 16.0 radians per second squared. So writing this out, um, we're solving this time for alpha BC, so I swing that to one side of the equation and everything else goes on the other side, and at the same time I've substituted in for alpha AB. So the final answer for alpha BC comes out to 13.3 radians per second squared, and it's come out as a positive value, which tells us that it's going um, anti-clockwise as we assumed at the beginning. So that's all there is for this question. Um, see you in the next one.